It's often necessary for celebrities to step away to escape the pressures of fame. They might do that forever, never returning to the limelight. They choose school, family, other business ventures, or just a normal life. Sometimes they take a temporary hiatus. Keep watching to learn about some major names who are no longer actresses. Kelly LeBrock Kelly started her career as a model. She became famous for her role in 1985's Weird Science. Her career seemed bright, and she landed a part in 1990's Hard to Kill. That's where she met husband Steven Seagal. They had a public and messy divorce in 1996, and it convinced her to quit the film industry altogether. She told Fox News becoming famous when she was young didn't do her any good. She even considered it traumatizing. Kelly admits that being famous isn't for everyone. She doesn't consider herself a Hollywood girl who wanted constant attention, but more than anything, she wanted to shield her three children from it. She lived in the wilderness with no TV or strong internet for 25 years. She dropped her representation and focused on living a simple life with her family, including three children and three grandchildren. She's only appeared on screen a few times since then, the last one being 2021's Tomorrow's Today. She said there was always a small itch to return, but a script had to be special to lure her back. Deborah Winger Deborah's career was at its peak in 1994. She had starred in a variety of successful projects like Terms of Endearment, An Officer and a Gentleman, and Shadowlands. She also had three Academy Award nominations under her belt. 1994 was also the year she retired from the business for six years. It was a short hiatus, but left a mark because of how much of a major name she had become. Rosanna Arquette made a documentary in 2022 about the pressures put on women in Hollywood and named it after her, searching for Deborah Winger. Deborah has spoken about her decision many times. Her primary reason was a desire to spend more time with her family. She has a son named Noah with her first husband, Timothy Hutton, and another son, Babe, with her current husband, Arliss Howard. Deborah told The Guardian in 2002 there were several reasons she left. She said she didn't want to leave her family for months to complete a film just to get a paycheck. The roles she was offered also weren't interesting enough. Her mother was also reaching the end of her life at the time. And she was concerned about the pressures put on an actress once they turned 40. Walking away helped Deborah feel free. She didn't have to base her self-worth on what others thought of her. She also didn't have to spend time auditioning and waiting for acceptance calls. She never wanted her retirement from acting to be permanent, though. She's been slowly returning to films, such as 2001's Big Bad Love and 2008's Rachel Getting Married. Her most recent role was in the 2021 series Mr. Corman. She's just pleased to be able to control her career in her own way and choose roles on her own time. Danica McKellar Danica McKellar became a huge star from her role in The Wonder Years. It was a role that could have catapulted her to years of work, but instead she decided to step away. She went to school at UCLA, and once she was there, she realized how closely she'd be associated with the role. Everyone on campus would shout out, Hey, Winnie! She wanted to escape it and find herself and develop her own identity. She also found it difficult to balance acting and schoolwork and needed to choose one or the other. Experiencing these struggles while she was young helped her learn how to protect her family from them. She told her 11-year-old son, Draco, that she'd never push him towards being an actor. At the same time, she would support him and enroll him in acting classes if that's what he wanted. Danica decided to focus on school once the Wonder Years ended. She graduated summa cum laude with a mathematics degree in 1988. She's also published 11 children's books to encourage the younger generation to develop a love for mathematics. Susan Day at age 18, Susan managed a feat that many actresses only dream of, starring in two hit series, The Partridge Family and L.A. Law. That put her amongst the likes of Carol O'Connor, Bill Bixby, and Mary Tyler Moore. She received many offers for roles after that and, after many successes, began turning them down. One of her most notable snubs was the role of Sandy in Grease. Olivia Newton-John was even considered for her role as Lori on The Partridge Family. She appeared in the 2002 L.A. Law reunion movie, but not in the Partridge Family reunion due to a falling out with the cast. Her final film was Rain in 2003, and her final TV appearance was an episode of Third Watch in 2004. It turns out Susan left the business to be a mother, wife, and activist. 
She had a daughter, Sarah, with Len Hershan in 1976, and her early success gave her the financial security to walk away. Today, she lives in upstate New York with her husband, Bernard Safonsky. Her daughter briefly acted but never made a major career out of it. Despite the drama, she also expressed condolences after the death of her Partridge Family co-star and friend Suzanne Koff on April 27, 2015. Phoebe Cates Phoebe is best known for her role in 1982's Fast Times at Ridgemont High. She followed it up with Drop Dead Fred and the Gremlin films and became an icon of the 80s and 90s. Then, all of a sudden, there was a major gap in her appearances. She showed up in 2001's The Anniversary Party, but hasn't appeared on screen in person again. The last time she was even close to the spotlight was when she voiced her Gremlins character in the 2015 video game Lego Dimensions. Motherhood may have been the reason. She has two children, Greta and Owen, with husband Kevin Klein. They met while auditioning for The Big Chill. She didn't get the role, but he hired her former assistant to set up a date. That was the beginning of a beautiful relationship and family. The couple intended to alternate so that they were never working at the same time. Kevin kept acting, but Phoebe decided to stay with the children. She now has a new business venture. She opened up her store, Blue Tree, on Madison Avenue in 2005. Kevin helped come up with the name, referencing the Blue Trees and Fauvist paintings. It's a general store selling clothing, jewelry, home goods, and more. The couple never forced their children into the spotlight, and their daughter Greta says they were never into celebrity culture. She's now a musician who performed with Porches from 2013 to 2015 and now plays as Frankie Cosmos. Owen produces and writes. Both of them have appeared in films like The Squid and the Whale and The Anniversary Party. Bridget Fonda Bridget was essentially born into the entertainment industry as part of the famous Fonda family. Her first role was when she was five, and she worked with her father, Peter, in 1969's Easy Rider. She also studied drama at the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute and NYU's Tisch School of the Arts. Jane made a name for herself in films like The Godfather Part Three and Single White Female. Her work in Scandal and the TV movie After Amy earned her two Golden Globe nominations. Her final major credit was in the 2002 miniseries Snow Queen. Life began to change after that, for better and for worse. She fractured a vertebra after a rollover car collision in February of 2003. A month later, she got engaged to Danny Elfman. They had their son Oliver in 2005. She became a mother and dropped out of the spotlight. Sometime later, Bridget was spotted at LAX airport. The press asked if she intended to start her acting career up again. She gave a very clear no and said it's too nice being a civilian. Karen Parsons Karen stole the show in almost every project she was in. That included shows and movies like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Major Pain, and The Job. Her final appearance was in 2002's Sweet Thing. After that, she shifted her focus entirely. She now has a daughter named Lana and a son named Nico. She started a nonprofit called the Sweet Blackberry Foundation in 2002. It creates animated films and books about lesser-known black heroes. She also became a successful writer and published three children's books to date. Now it's time to hear from you. Who is your favorite among these actresses? Do you wish they would come back into the limelight? Let us know in the comments section below.